That song is a message in itself. Praise God for our young people, Casey. And I thank the Lord for the way he has been leading your life. That you'll continue to be faithful. This morning before I get into the message, I just want to remind you that we had our mega clinic this past weekend. And over a thousand people were served. Many people came seeking for something and they left being blessed. And we were honored to be placed in the monitor on the front page. It's on the notice board out there. Uh, it says, Get Healthy Clinic has mega turnout. Praise God. Giving back to the society. And as you read the article, the church was mentioned prominently. And uh, our name is out there. Many people who came, they would not have been exposed to the gospel if they were not there. So it was a great opportunity to share the gospel. So as we met their needs, we showed them how to follow Christ and to have life and to have it more abundantly. And so I pray that you'll, you'll put on your prayer list these over 1,000 names because we have a plan to reach out to each and every one of them. And by God's grace, his name will be honored in their lives and in ours as well. So we thank you all, all those who uh, labored over this past weekend. I want to thank Sister Donna who led out, spearhead the, the project. If it was not for her and her foresight, we would not have been able to do it last year and this year. We had to have somebody with a strong will. Even when the forces are saying no, she kept saying yes. <laughs> so God is good, and we want to praise his name that we have individuals like those in our church who are willing to go against the grain and to just proclaim the gospel in whatever way we can. Because, my friends, we cannot keep doing the same things over and over and getting bad results. We are a fool if we keep doing that. We have to go outside of the box sometimes in order to reach people for God's glory. And so as we look forward to meeting these people again, uh, keep them in your prayers and keep our church in your prayers. And I want to welcome every single one of you here today. Some of you are coming here for the first time. Some are coming into Adventist Church. I thank the Lord that you are here because God has a message for you. You're not here because of accident. God sent you here today to hear something that can cause your life to be better. In him is fullness. In whom is fullness. We talk about Let us pray. Our Lord and our Savior, you are indeed a wonderful God. And it is because of that why we're here. Because of who you are and what you want to do for us. And so we come with open arms, open hearts. So fill us, Lord. Uh, embrace us with your embracing love, with your mighty hands, and help us, Lord, to leave here uh, being enlightened with your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. In Colossians 1, verse 19, which was read in our uh, scripture reading, it says, For it pleased the Father that in him, and we are going to recognize that this him that we're talking about here is Jesus. In Jesus, all fullness dwell. So God, the, God let's say you're saying that it pleased the Father that in Jesus, all fullness. Have you ever been full? Have you ever been full? I think I was there yesterday and I was full. Did you eat a break as this morning, or are you still empty? But in Jesus, it's full. God sought it to place all fullness, so that all fullness will dwell in Jesus. 
to go back a few verses that delivered us from the power of darkness. Yes, my friends, Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness. What I'm saying is that we were once in darkness as part of what Jesus did. We are no longer in darkness. He has translated us the kingdom of his dear son. We are having translation today. We are translating from English to Spanish. We were somewhere and he had to take us out of where we were and place us somewhere else. We were in the kingdom of darkness. And he has placed us in the kingdom of his dear son. Isn't that a wonderful thought? In whom we have redemption. Is that in, in the son. His blood of sins. Do you have sins that you need forgiveness of? Go to Jesus. Who is the image of the invisible God? So therefore, he placed all fullness in him because he is God. The firstborn of every creation. And many people misinterpret this last phrase, the firstborn of every creation, thinking that Jesus was created. My friends, no, he was not. He was the first in existence. That is what it's saying. Jesus was from everlasting to everlasting. He and his Father are from everlasting to everlasting, the firstborn of every creation. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And therefore, that's why all fullness can be found in him. For by him were all things created, he is. That's why he is full of everything. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So things that we can see, can see. Things that we can and things that we can't see, he has created. Whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. That's why you're here today. That's why you're alive today. It's because of him. He did not create us and leave us by ourselves, but he has kept his loving arms to cradle us so that we can exist. And then, in all things, he is the head of body, the church. You may have thought that I was head of this church. You may have thought that, have thought that the president of the Texas conference was the head of the church. You may have thought that the president of the general conference was the head of the church. But my friends, God, through Jesus, is the head of the church. And we go back to verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him, in Jesus, should all fullness dwell. And therefore it says, and having made peace, because through the blood of his cross and by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in heaven or things in her earth, all things are reconciled to him. For it pleased the Father. It's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus pleased the Father. It's a wonderful thing to know that a son pleases the Father. 
This morning we have young Hector here. He's coming back home. Went away for many months to study. He's been successful and I can see that he pleases his father. His father is very proud of him. Because he's back home, he's completed. He didn't, li he didn't come back worse than he left. He came back better than he left. He's now someone with a, 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 a profession. He pleases his father. And here it says, Jesus pleased the father so that in him all the fullness will dwell. All fullness. What does it mean? Ecclesiastes, what does it mean for us? 12, 8. Solomon, the man that is considered the wisest man that ever lived. He looked at life and he looked at all the pleasures of this world. And he said, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. All is vanity. When I look around me and I, I seek for the pleasures of this world, I seek for things to make me happy, I think, seek for things to make me full, I see that everything that is around me is all emptiness. All is vanity. Romans 8, 7 verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. I want to do good, and I check myself, and I see that in me is no good thing. And I desire to do what is good, but I do not have the will to do it. I seem to be hopeless. Luke chapter 2. There is great joy, because the angels said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The angels, brought, we read this text during Christmas time, but we forget it during the course of the year. But my friends, this is something we need to remember at all times. Jesus brings great joy. Not only to the Jews, he said to all people. For unto, you, for unto you is born today. I think the mic is giving a little problem. Could you check on it for me, please? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Christ brings joy. And then Paul speaking in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. Who, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 10. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. You know, when man sinned, God put forth the formula for salvation. God told Adam that he needed to uh, offer a lamb. He told Abraham the same thing. He told Moses the same thing. And throughout the course of the Jewish history, throughout the course of Jewish history, we see that sacrifices were offered pointing to Jesus. But they offered sacrifices on a daily basis. And on a yearly day basis, they had the Day of Atonement, and they started the process all over again, and year after year. But my friends, Paul is here saying, and not the very image of the things can never be, never with those sacrifices which 
they offered year by year continually make comers there unto perfect. It never made them perfect because they were looking forward to the Savior who would come. But then one day great joy took place. Jesus came in person. He lived a life of simplicity. He lived a life of, of love and joy and peace. Never sinned. Died on the cross for you and I. And in Matthew 19 verse 30 tells us, When Jesus therefore had received vinegar, he said, It is finished. The job is done. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And then the next time we see Jesus, we see him in, in the book of Revelation. John, the revelator, sees him in Revelation chapter 1, 14 to 16. His head and his hair were like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire. And his feet like the fine bronze, brass, as if they, were, they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as, was as the sun shineth in his strength. John sees Jesus as he was glorified. The sword that comes from his mouth represents, I think it's not working. The sword that comes from his mouth represents the omnipotent power. The omnipotence of his, the power of his words. When God speaks, my friends, something happens. And that's why all fullness is in him. Because what comes out of him is life. When he called the world into existence, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Out of his mouth came life and all power with it. His countenance, as we read, was like the sun in all its glory. This represents his unapproachable and infinite glory. And that's why in him is all fullness. His eyes his, represents his incomparable wisdom. You cannot hide anything from him. He sees beyond what you can see. He sees your heart. And as his eyes peers into your heart this morning. What is he seeing? His fullness, my friends, as God, because he is God. His fullness as man, because he is all man. But he's man because he wants to draw all men to him. Because he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. First Chronicles 28 verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy fathers, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts. And understandest all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seekest, if thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. This was David's last statement to his son Solomon and I will go back to it and thou Solomon my son you know my son is going to be leaving here in another week or so maybe I should be saying this to him <laughs> oh thou Solomon my son know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. 
Serve God with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. This morning, the call is for us this morning to serve God with a perfect heart. And not, all, not with a mind that we have to drag and pull, but with a willing mind. Young people, serve God with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, my friends, and understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts, if thou seek him. Young people, all the people, everyone, if you seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. What do you seek this morning? Because remember, we started the message by saying, in all fullness is Jesus. The Father was pleased to place all fullness in Jesus. Solomon said to, David said to Solomon, seek the Lord. And if you seek him, you will find him. I ask you this morning, what are you seeking? Do you want a new heart? Do you want a new heart? Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. And I will give them. Do you seek life from sin? Ephesians 5.14 Wherefore he said, Arise thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Please, arise from where you are. Seek God. Seek Christ because in him is all fullness. In him, whatever you seek, you'll find it there. Arise, those that are sleeping. Arise, those that are taking naps. Arise, those that, those that are indifferent. Arise, those that don't care. Arise and seek God. Arise from the dead. Christ will give you light. Do you seek truth and grace? Well, in John 1, 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh, and the Word was Jesus. Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And he was what? Full of grace and truth. Do you seek truth? Find Jesus. Do you think grace, and grace is this unmerited favor, we don't deserve it, we are all sinners, we are destined to die, there's no good thing in me, there's no good thing in you, but when you come to Jesus, he gives you what you do not have, he takes away your sinful nature, and he gives you of himself, because in him is all fullness. Matthew 5 verse 6 tells me that if I seek righteousness, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Because he is full of righteousness, he will give you his righteousness, and he will still remain full. He will never be empty. Righteousness is holiness. Holiness to God. His streams will never run dry. Because he's always full. Always full. And as his streams run from him, he will cause the desert place to become a garden. How about your lives this morning? Is it like a desert place? Is it all parched and dry? 
no water there. But when you find Jesus, my friends, the streams that flow from him will, will replenish the parched land. His fullness is wrapped up in himself. He will distribute it for his glory. And he's willing and ready this morning to distribute it. The man who lifted the children on his lap and said, do not run the children away, bring them to me. This man, my friends, who humbled himself to lift a child is willing to humble himself to save you. The man who bore our sorrows, many today have sorrows and pain and stresses in the heart. My friends, he bore our sorrows, he is willing to take it from you and to give you peace. So that you can forgive yourself of the past. We won't keep beating ourselves up. But he'll take our sorrows. He'll take our pain. Yes, he bore our pain. He bore our shame. He will take it all because he's full. He bore the crown of thorns you want for me. Why? So that we don't have to bear it. Hebrews 7 verse 25. Wherefore he is able, O oh friends. Why is he able? Because he is full. Full of whatever you need. You need peace, he is full of peace. You need grace, he's full of grace. You need life, he's full of life. You need joy, he's full of joy. You need mercy, he's full of mercy. He's able, my friends, also to save them to the uttermost that come unto him, but God by him, seeing that he ever liveth. That's all he lives for. He ever liveth to, have, to make intercession for them. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. He pleased the Father. This morning I will conclude with 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon had just built sanctuary, made sac uh, sacrifice to the Lord in Gibeah. And then God appeared to Solomon in verse 7 of chapter 3. And now, O Lord, O my Lord, and now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my servant, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Do we feel like that sometimes? It's like a little child. A little child, we have to guide them. We can't allow them to go out on the street by themselves. We have to have somebody to hold their hands. How about as a little child, he says. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen. A great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant understanding and understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the Bible tells us, and the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. You want to please the Lord this morning? Who wants to please the Lord this morning? Solomon said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Do we want that to be your prayer this morning? Give me an understanding heart. So that I may know how to discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? 
and the speech pleased the Lord. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked for life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before, neither after thee shall any arise unto thee, like unto thee. What do you require of the Lord this morning? We're starting a new church year. We have new church officers. And some may be saying, I have a big task ahead of me. I'm but as a little child. I do not know where to go next. Go to Jesus. Maybe we are looking for new opportunities in our lives. We don't know where to go next. We do not, not, do not know what our next step will be. Go to Jesus. We have projects that we want to do, but we do not know how to start. Let's go to Jesus. In our homes, we have problems. Maybe husbands and wives, children and, children and parents. We do not know how to solve these problems. How about going to Jesus? Sometimes some of us may be praying for something. We've been praying for a while. And we are not quite sure if the Lord is hearing us. Let's keep going to Jesus. His ears are always open. His eyes are always watching. So as we journey together in this new church year, let's go to Jesus who is always full. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. He is God, but he is our Savior. He is your Savior. He is my Savior. He's your king. He's my king. He's your Lord. He is my Lord. Don't leave this place without making the decision to walk with Christ. Please. Don't leave this place. Don't let this opportunity pass you. Because in him is wrapped up all that you need to walk as a child of the king. In him is wrapped up everything that you need to live a godly life. In him is wrapped up all the joy that you need. In him, my friends, it is wrapped up all the peace that you need. But he can't give it to you if you don't ask for it. If you don't open yourself and say, Lord, I need it. I can't go another step without walking with you. This morning, I'm going to ask our church leaders who were elected for the new year to come down here so we can talk to the Lord together. Because we cannot start this journey without the Lord. So I'm going to ask all our new church leaders to come down together. And as they come, I want those who are thinking, there is something lacking in my life. There is something lacking. And because Jesus is always full, every person who has a position in the church, come on down. There is something lacking in my life. And I've been seeking for ways to fill it. But everything I've tried 
just seem not to work. I still have this big hole here somewhere. And you want Jesus to fill it. Do you want to join our friends here? Would you like would someone who wants that hole, that vacuum, that thing there to be filled? Come on down. Come on down. Don't be afraid. Come on down. Somebody walk with her. Come down with her. Come on down. Because we want the whole world to see that you're, you're accepting Jesus today. Come on down. Praise God. Praise God, my little one. You can come and join. Okay, it's okay. Is there another? Is there another? Something is prompting you. And you know that the Lord wants you to come down. Lord wants you to make that decision to walk with him. The past has been dark. Even maybe this morning you walked in here and it has been dark. But you have seen the light. And you want to walk in the light. Come down. Come down, friend. Maybe this walk will be the walk that causes you to see Jesus' face. Come down. Come down. One last call. One last call. Do you want to walk with Jesus with a perfect heart? Oh, friends, let us pray. Father, who art in heaven, we begin this year, this church year, as members of the church and leaders seeking divine intervention in our lives. Seeking the lamp that will guide our path so that we will not stumble. So many plans may be afoot for the new year. Lord, we place them in your hands and we pray that you will use us for your glory. Use each member who has said yes to work for you. Help them, Lord, to have that wisdom, that knowledge, and that understanding. So we will be able to choose between good and bad. And we will always choose you. Oh Lord, you see these two individuals who have come down seeking a perfect heart, seeking peace, in their lives, seeking a renewal of the joy that can only be found in you. Oh Lord, I pray that you lift them up. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your peace. Fill them with your joy. Fill them with your righteousness. Take away the stony heart. Give them a heart of flesh. Oh Father, I praise your name because you're still working on the hearts of individuals. And individuals are still saying yes to you. Thank you. And because from you all things flow, May the abundance of your joy be ours today, in Jesus' name.